first person I saw was Nick Maxwell, and he was absolutely screaming his lungs out. And he was saying, no, it's not right. No, it's not right. This is bullshit, you know? And I'm looking at him, I'm speechless. What, what am I going to say to this bloke? Lying around, waiting to die. Never did quite satisfy. A siren song. Sugar tongue, so easily undone. I feel sick now, like talking about it. Yeah, nervous and got the shakes a little bit. My dark angel, won't you drag those nails across my soul? Cross my soul. I was just like, how could this possibly happen this day and age? When you think about the draw, what's the first feelings that are overriding? <laughs> that. <laughs> And I actually said to him, Senator, shut the f up. Every group's got their own story. Every footy club's got their own story. That's the beauty of footy, I guess. But we had some challenges, that group, and especially in 2010. You just do anything to get back there again. The start of 2010 was an incredibly difficult period. We should have won 09. Lost pretty much in the last minute of the game. To not walk away with a result and with a silverware, it's, you know, Really? Is it, is it never going to happen? It took a lot out of us, um, that game, to deal with it, the psychological factor. So we thought we'd done that quite well. I don't think we lost faith. We had this group that were just incredibly committed to delivering St Kilda its second only premiership in 140 odd years. The emotional platform that that set up was just extraordinary. They talk about being in the window of opportunity, and they were in the window, they were in the zone, they were playing good footy. Ross had got them firing, they were a br you know, brilliant team. In AFL news today, Collingwood has appointed Nick Maxwell as its new captain. The 25-year-old defender takes over from Scott Burns, who retired at the end of last season. I wanted to be such a part of the history of this club, which uh, I've seen guys go through like Nathan Buckley and Scott Burns and played under them, and. Just honoured to have my name beside them. Nick, on his appointment in 2009, declared we will win a premiership. And we didn't. Then he said it again in 2010. That's brave. It's out there. And it's setting an ambition. In 2010, we knew that this was our moment. We commissioned Jeff Walsh to give us a warts and all appraisal of where we were as a football club two years out, and he predicted that we would win the Premiership in 2010. Plans were aligning because we, we were a young group and their recruitment was very, very good. We worked it and we recruited towards it and Nick coached towards it and we played towards it. We had everything going for us. We had the facilities, what was then the Westpac Centre. We had the coaching, we had the psychology, we had committed the resources to the ultimate success. If you've got more resources for your football club, you're more than likely going to be playing in finals. And you have to say, certainly Collingwood had the financial wherewithal, St Kilda didn't. We had appalling facilities, no development program, virtually no recruiting program. We didn't have the funding, the finances to actually have any decent structures in those places. We didn't know anything different. Like, I've never been to Westpac Centre or Adelaide in their facilities, but that kind of made us 
You know, we're doing it the hard way. We're from Melbourne with the Saints. We didn't have what they had, but in some ways that was a strength of ours because we knew that we were up against it. It added to the bubble that we created at St Kilda. It was just about the playing group. Didn't matter what the facilities looked like. Didn't matter the chin-up bar was, you know, hanging by some tape. And we just did what we had to do, and, and we had what was enough, and, and we made the best of it. There was no heating, no cooling. I didn't have a phone system, so I got in the habit of yelling from office to office. So now, even where I am now, I just yell out down the hallways. <laughs> Guys used to have to sit in their offices in the middle of winter with jackets on. It was so cold. It was home to 25,000 pigeons. You can come in, there was a red door on one of the entrances, and if you come up there, there was a door to the offices, but if you went out the other door, you actually plunged about 15 feet. <laughs> we, had, we had this massive exhaust fan that if you got too close, there'd be just a smell of burnt hair it'd throughout the gym because it'd singe all the hairs on your legs if you got too close to it, so... And it just blared. Occasionally, guys would just, you know, bump a teammate so he'd come in the line of fire. And looking back, there are a lot of things that, you know, it just wouldn't happen now. 45 guys we used to have two toilets. So you can imagine... <laughs> and one of them was in closed space where you didn't want to walk in after anyone, but you'd almost suffocate. I think it was only recently the roof fell in in the administration area. Yeah, yeah, well, it's not it lasted that long. <laughs> they're there, they're into another grand final of the prize. Nick, it's so loud down here. Is it sunk in as captain of this club? You're going to lead them into a grand final this week? No, it hasn't, mate. Um, it's just been a step-by-step -step process. We said at the start of the year we want to win a premiership, so uh, look forward to next week. It's all over. Saints have won it. And as they did in 1966 when they won their only flag, they will play Collingwood next week. We finished third on the ladder. Collingwood and Geelong finished 1-2, so they were clearly, I think, favourites going into the grand final and, and had been the best team that year. I remember early in the year, round 16, we played the Saints at the MCG and we won by about five goals. So, massive win by Collingwood, who are on top of the ladder. Beating the Saints then, all of a sudden, as a group, we went, actually, we're, we're a chance here. We're, we've got them covered. We can beat them on the MCG. I guess you could say it's a precursor to things to come, hopefully. And, uh, yeah, they, they've had a pretty good record over us, so important to make a bit of a start. And after that game, like, we knew we were probably the ones to beat. But we had a bit of a party group. That party pretty much stopped, and we really committed to each other. I thought we challenged them in that game to the extent where they were, in my opinion, flat out. And I thought that our next step was, we've bloodied their nose, we can go past them. 14 premierships to this team, but their strike rate isn't that good. Last premiership in 1990. We all know the Collingwood history since the 50s was one of heartache in grand finals other than 1990. I mean, we all can rattle them off. 60, 64, 66, 70, 77, twice, 79, 80, 81, 2002, 2003. So you know all that history of our club, but you also know the history of their club. And you know that their one victory was a one-point win against Collingwood in 1966. I've got a lot of mates who go for Collingwood, and, you know, they're obviously excited to, you know, 20 years on to, to try and break the drought. But for me, it's like, you know, this is my first ever opportunity. I'm not going to worry about, you know, 20 years of baggage. I didn't really feel any weight of expectation myself in terms of worrying about it or being the captain of the club or anything. I certainly understood what it meant. Deep down, I wanted St Kilda to win from the perspective of teams that haven't won for a long time. You really want their supporters to have some joy in their lifetime. And the fact that 66 was the last premiership the club had won was, I guess, spoken about externally a lot, and fans would, would speak about it a lot, but we didn't touch on it at all. We were aware of it, but it didn't alter our preparation or how hard we wanted to try or anything to do with our football. I mean, certainly we're aware that fans have been craving a win. Once you kind of hear about it, um, kind of does, oh, wow, like, you know, if this happens, it would be unbelievable. It was like, yeah, it's meant to be, this is our time.
As we get set for the highly anticipated AFL Grand Final tomorrow between the Saints and the Magpies, Grand Final Eve sees the traditional parade. 100,000 people packed central Melbourne to cheer on their teams. This is what it's like, behind the scenes. Lollies. The first uh, 400 metres of the parade, the media are entitled to get inside the barriers and they may just ask uh, you guys some random questions. So that's part of the deal, so just be as benign and as bland as possible. If you ask about selection, just pop it off and it'll be what it'll be. We'll move on to the next question. It's a great part of the week. Some players aren't fortunate enough to experience it at all, so it's it's fantastic. Um, oh, it's pretty exciting, mate. Um, pretty much just thinking about the game now. Everyone to come around as quick as we can. It's a bit of a pain in the ass, to be honest. It's good for the fans. That's great, but you sort of want to, you know, train, go home, and get ready for the game. Being part of Grand Final Week, going through the parade, is one of the greatest things you ever do. At that point, I realised what footy meant to people. Well, look, today's all about the fans and enjoying sitting back and trying not to get too nervous. Carl Thomas, sitting next to Scott Pendlebury, are you happy with the accommodation? Could not have worked out any better, mate. I'll never forget, me and Daisy were in the back of the car together. Two kids that played in a flag five years earlier at Gippsland Power. Now here we are. The black and white of the Magpie Army outnumbering the black, white and red of Saints supporters. Yeah, well, it's just the way it is. You either you know, love us or hate us, that's why, because we've got the most amount of supporters. Black and white, basically everywhere, the Collingwood Army literally come out and, you know, we're singing that Collingwood Army song, whatever they sing, and it was just that loud. Really noticed it once we, we went up on stage and got presented to the crowd, to the extent that I, I basically got booed off the stage. So, nice sign of respect there, that's great. <laughs> sort of, we just look around and have a laugh because it's just, you know, we're used to our supporters doing that sort of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it was great, I love when our supporters do that. Very disrespectful of it, but it was great. The ending didn't leave a great taste in my mouth. I must be honest, when, when Rui was trying to talk and, and the Collingwood chant went up, I thought that was a bit disrespectful. And I remember thinking that, OK, uh, it's on, you know, it's on. Now, a tip from you? Um, a draw would be good, Neil, to come back and do it all again next week. What, for your uh, money? Well, it helps, but it's a good result for the AFL. <laughs> I sort of tipped it most years. I was hoping for a draw for a long time. Sort of deep down wouldn't, wouldn't have minded a draw during my tenure at the AFL. But there's only been two previous drawn grand finals, 1948 and 1977. We pull this game right out of the fire, mainly through teamwork. Everybody came to the rescue just when we needed that extra point. It's a draw, it's a draw. The 1977 grand final is a draw. Oh, and we'll be back here next week. Over 120 odd years, this is not going to happen. There's no such thing as, an, as another drawn grand final. We always get together on the Friday and just do a run through of the run sheet. And at the end of the meeting, we always talk about a contingency if there's a draw. And we used to say that every year. Julia Gillard told the North Melbourne Grand Final Breakfast how anxious she became during contests held on Saturdays. Please, please, we cannot have a draw. Our nation just couldn't bear it. Australians deserve a result today. And most of the guests thought they knew what it would be. If St Kilda can win another premiership in my lifetime, I will die a happy man. They don't like each other, these two teams. No. This first five minutes will be fascinating. <laughs> Nick Boy, Maxwell wins the toss and Collingwood are kicking to the city end of the ground and the team goes down to the goal square in front of the Ferrells in the cheer squad to get that last bit of uh, energy they can derive from the crowd. <laughs> oh, they're right in the goal square. I decided to take the boys to the goal square where all our supporters are. It was about getting the players involved but also getting all the supporters involved and I know that they loved it. You can't help but get the, uh, the hairs in the back of your neck standing up when you're there because they're all just going bananas. It just gets you going and gets you fired up, which I think is important. You've got to start games well. We've done the work. We're well prepared. We know what it looks like. A lot of yelling, a bit of swearing in there. Once you've come that far, you're clearly a good team capable of playing great football. So it's going to take 22 of us and wouldn't want to be on this field with 
any other blokes. The players now in their natural habitat, the MCG, the last Saturday in September. The house pool sign is up, and away we go. The grand final is underway. It's Bills to penalty. Handball over top the Dynac. Time to steady. He handballed it jolly. He squeezed it through. And it has taken 22 seconds for Collingwood to kick the opening goal. Two on one. Milne at the back takes a mark. Did not bother going back over the mark. Just a snap from 20 out, and there it is. The Saints get there first. It's in dangerous hands too, isn't it? Yeah. Didac, about as tough as it gets for a left footer. Oh, oh, for some. What more can you say? Oh. <laughs> so Thomas, he's going to talk. He's kicked a long, long goal. Oh, That's a goal. Oh, he's no. kicked a goal. That's a mug. It was a mongrel finger breaking up country punt kick. Haggard's this, we're off to a flyer. This is what you want. If there was any advantage of, of being there the year before, that was probably erased, you know, in the in the first 20 seconds. But they kicked a few goals out of their ass. At some point, I'm just like, it's not going to be one of those days, just where nothing can go wrong for them. It's early going, but the Saints need the next goal. Their backs are firmly planted against the wall in the early stages of this grand final. Ross Lyon, not to contemplate at the moment. They had three on really quickly. Wow, it's not ideal against what is a great team for that year. Fisher inside 50, here comes Rewalt. Takes it. Has to play the game of his life, you'd think, for the Saints to win this. Here he goes to the punt road end. Drop punt. He loves it. Good boy. Bang! Built it away there by Reed. Schneider loves a goal in a grand final and delivers. And the Saints are back in this match in a big way. Feel like we've got a good grand yep. final coming. Yeah, yeah. Normally, in most games of football you play, you always find your second win. That game, I remember, I never found my second win. It was like I was exhausted for the whole contest. It was a hot day. That coupled with the high pressure in terms of tackling, it was an exhausting day. And I was absolutely knackered. I think I would have run off two or three times just to get your breath back. It was just so intense and quite, you could feel it. You know, we're grinding, we're grinding and grinding. The pressure's through the roof. There's no easy positions. For me, it was a tough day emotionally. Playing against my old team, who I played in a losing grand final with 12 months earlier, it was pretty tough not to let emotions build up. Ball and Hayes head to head. This ball is Captain St Kilda. What a rare spot he finds himself in today. Coming up against a, a mate who, you know, I'd spent a lot of time playing next to him, loved playing with him, um, and then for him to go to to the enemy and, and come up against him on grand final day. It was a little bit awkward, I'm not gonna lie. Start of the second quarter, so the Saints coming back strongly, Collingwood lead. Ball under pressure, did brilliantly. Now Brown looks inside the forward 50. Cloak is favoured by the kick, needs to kick this way. Needs to kick start himself, and he does. Splits the middle. Long option, Kaczynski, beautiful kick. If he can get there, he does. Look that. He's 50 from home, the big man, and goes bang! Look at that! From downtown, Harry O'Brien oh, has kicked the goal! And Cunning will get the seventh! The chalk figure! On the mid B, Clark! Got it! In he comes, and a miss. Well, that might be the lid off. But they are after the Saints. And it falls for Cloak, and he's missed again. He's missed to the left, he's missed to the right. There's the siren for half time, as if on cue. Collingwood finished with the lead, they're out by 24. It should have been much bigger. Jogging off and you just think, oh, we should be five or six goals up here. It's sort of like, Jesus. I felt that we we're in a world of pain, going to the AFL function, and you sit there and there's tension. The Collingwood guys were up and about. And we went in at half time, and Senator Stephen Conroy, who's a great Collingwood supporter, and his Collingwood jumper under his suit, and he came up to me and he said, We're one, we're home, we're home. And I went off my head. I just said, Oh no, this is the ghost of every 
shambles of a grand final we've ever had. And I actually said to him, Senator, shut the f up. The Saints appear to be in desperate trouble. The game is almost gone. What can they do, this group, to get back into it? 24 points the lead for the Magpies as we start the second half of the grand final. Pendlebury brought to ground by Milne. They've got to show a bit. They've got to show a bit, the Saints. Just get the annoyed. There we go. I like it. I like it. On now, Montagna. Boxing on with Johnson. Now Swan walks through. Ah, oh, oh, Lenny Hayes. Holding the ball. Big statement. Big statement in the game. Oh, Lenny Hayes stands his ground on Dane Swan. Massive moment. Lenny almost single-handedly had felt picked up the whole football club and the whole Southern stand and took it on the journey with him. Revolt presents yeah. good kick, Cozzy. This is big. If Nick Revolt goes back and drills this, don't worry, we've got to go. Nick Revolt has kicked a goal. Here we go. Ouch! Mick has gone absolutely brisk in the box. You know how I like lip reading, Hutto? Yep. It was F and reading. They were the two words he said. Oh. Revolt long in the Cozzy direction. BJ got on in from the side. Got on. Here we go. Somehow St Kilda have got up off the mat here. Brendan got on from 25 metres out. It's just gone through. And he goes to his heart. He goes to his heart with his hand and says that is what is going to win us the game. And St Kilda get the first couple of goals of the third quarter. Well, Senator Stephen Conroy, I was staring through the back of his head. He would have felt my laser in him, into him. At the football, the one thing I hate is when people come up and say, oh, we're home, we're home early. The early crow drives me insane. Well, all the things that you thought about at halftime come to fruition. We're in for a hell of a, a hell of a fight to, re to resurrect the game, get back an even keel. Hayes kicked a long ball now to Revolt. Revolt. Oh! Oh! What a great oh, oh, oh. It has gone up a notch. This game has gone up not just one, but two notches. Gilbert lurking. Maxwell getting back. Kept his head over at Maxwell. The handball for Schneider. Can't quite break it. Gilbert. Gilbert. He's got it. There it is. Margin seven points. Have not kicked a goal this term, the Maggies. Thomas in there as well. Oh, wow. And Thomas takes the mark. Oh, he looks to give it off, and it works. Howard be 20 years of age, Jared Blair, 30 metres out. Oh, it's wobbly, it hits the post. They have stopped the pies. It's working the for the grand Saints. final pressure has got to them. It really has. And it's three-quarter time. Collingwood lead by eight points. And the anticipation around the MCG for this last quarter is just extraordinary. Well, the Saints have done a magnificent job to bring themselves right back. Collingwood goals in the third quarter. Someone tried to compose this because we were just, everyone just talking and no one's catching their breath. So everyone is still up and about. And you try and stay in the moment, but it's too hard. It's hard not to think about the result either way. It is tough. We didn't want to change too much. We didn't want to change too much. Just keep it going, win the ball, go forward. I was just hoping that we just had enough left in the tank. You drift occasionally and think, how good would it be if we were able to run over top of these blokes? So much to play for, that goes without saying, but it's these two teams. Deep down, the consequences are grave. I mean, you've led convincingly through, it, through the match before half time, and you come into three quarter time and it's been whittled away to something that's now very gettable and the momentum had shifted. And momentum is one of the hardest things that you will block. I went into the bathroom, I had to get away just to compose myself because I could see what was happening. And when I went inside the uh, AFL function room, there was a lone person sitting at a table with her head in her hands and tears in her eyes. And it was Elsie Rose, Bob Rose's widow. Bob Rose, who lost in 64 by a kick, 66 by a point, and 70 after the biggest lead in the history of an AFL VFL grand final. And Elsie just couldn't, couldn't look at it anymore. Is the curse, is it still here? Did we just break it for one moment in time in 1990? Has it come back? Are we ever going to shake it? Davis and Dempster. to Davis. He's made a mark on the big stage. 
I thought that was the moment. Oh, thank God. That's it. That's the one. Oh, he's, he's just so pumped. Hayes. He might be too far out, I think. Could Lenny find the distance from here? I knew that my teammates didn't have confidence in me. Thinking, no, you're, not, you're probably not a chance to get the distance. He's going to take this on his shoulders himself. Well, he's a man for a big occasion, we know that, but can he get the distance? He's pumped it hard. He's pumped it low. He's yeah. kicked the goal. Lenny Hayes found a metre when he needed it. He couldn't kick it that far, yet in that moment when we needed to, he found one extra metre. I remember thinking the last quarter, far out. He's carrying us. Well, if he hasn't got his name on the Norm Smith medal, it's not far off it. I just can't believe the way he's willing his team over the line, Hayes. What of Collingwood, this mighty team got left. High inside 50. Milner! Milner! And it's there! Oh, no! One point margin! Bloody hell! It is extraordinary! Eric Banner on the screen, he is screaming. He's I remember kind of saying something to Ben Johnson. I said, mate, surely you're shitting yourself. I thought, shit. <laughs> On the ground, ball. The old Saint clashed heads with Hayes. Somehow, Revolt heaved it on the boot. It's all about the bounce. He's bouncing towards goal. Sets on the line. Scores are level. There was one captain and another. The Revolt kick. The Maxwell despairing lines. How did he get there, like? I thought goal. That's that's why he was the captain. I was just like, f that was close. If they had a just dribbled, like most of them do, just kept low on the ground, it would have went through. Have we ever spent two hours at the MCG like this before? I don't think so, Bruce. Here is Hayes, belting forward. Got it! I remember feeling goosebumps. Shit, this might actually happen. We might win this. I thought that was it. I'm that pumped up, valve popped or something, and you know, it's gonna be dizzy for a second. Like you're that excited and thinking of what could be. I think we're gonna win a premiership. It was a pretty powerful moment. Collingwood has never been behind in this grand final today. The Saints have never been in front until now. I was pretty calm. I just sensed a few players maybe feel like, oh, we've got this. And I remember looking up and going, no, we've still got six or seven minutes to go. So don't, you know. And the St Kilda fans, they have this emotion released. And the Collingwood fans, you could just feel people just sinking back. I'm picturing the front and back page tomorrow, Saints second flag. And I made a conscious decision when I went right after the ball comes in my area again, I'm going to try something. I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna risk them getting a goal and us losing for a chance to win it. Robert Maxwell with a mark. Takes the big grab. The Pies try and break it open through the middle. He's sure. Is the ace in the pack for Clark? Of all people. And fell for Travis Clark. And even he couldn't miss from there. He's put them in front. Eddie McGuire's turned purple. Revolt will skip over the pack and take a back. Revolt uh, took one of the great marks. If we hit the ball to the boundary line there, we win. It's all over. Just me and Mione in that 450 by ourselves. It's pretty nerve wracking. Got out in four pies and hit the turf. Hayes, this is your moment, Stephen Milne. The ball bouncing in the pocket. He's bounced back on its goal. It's level, it's a point. and cooked but it's five meters away from me and I couldn't have died for it so that's why I kind of let it bounce. And if the ball hadn't have bounced right I was gone. There was no way of stopping him. Thank God I, I would have buried myself out there if he had a kick done it. If I could have got it I would have got it obviously. One in a thousand that it would bounce on its axis like that and go complete right angles. Imagine if Mildy had a kick the goal that would have been it. I would have, oh, I would have walked, out the, walked out the back and jumped out the, the stand. T-minus one minute and counting. Oh, a minute to go on the clock. Any shot will win a premiership. Not a game, 
any shot to win a premiership. We had a draw in 1948 and a draw in 1977. Graham Hart had it. Blair. And the Hughes are short. Hughes play by Graham. He left his opponent, McCaffrey, to make the uh, out number if the ball went over the top. The pies are away. You've never heard 100,000 people. Just the silence. You just know that what you've just gone through, you've got to do it all again. I felt like my body had just sunken into the MCG. You felt, well, you felt nothing. But I actually had the thought, they might change the rule, they might play extra time. Probably stupid in hindsight, but I, I had that thought for a minute. For some reason, I thought we had extra time. I remember just laying on the ground thinking, like, I, I don't have 10 more minutes to give, like, I'm done. I said, no, nah, boys, we're, we're coming back next week, and guys didn't know that. Well, the first person I think I saw was Nick Maxwell, and he was absolutely screaming his lungs out. He was saying, no, it's not right, no, it's not right, this is, this is bullshit, you know? And I'm looking at him, I'm, I'm speechless. What, what am I going to say to this boy? It's, I was just like, how could this possibly happen this day and age? It's probably going to take this for the AFL to change the rules because it's an absolute joke. There's no way it should be decided after another game. It was almost as though, what are we going to do, Andrew? Like, are we seriously going to play next week? Can't, can you change your decision? Can you change your mind? He had a smirk on his face because he knew it was going to be a pretty big windfall straight on the bottom line for the AFL. I just said, you're pretty happy, aren't you? He said, you, geez, you guys are going to do well out of this, aren't you? I said, yeah, we probably will. Just a bizarre moment, like, oh, God, it is ka-ching, but bloody hell. <laughs> I know it's not what this game is all about, but you may get the opportunity to win two Norm Smith medals in a row. Do they hand one out today, do they? <laughs> they do. That's the strange things, uh, but, mate, jeez. Norm Smith medal for the drawing game, Lenny Hayes. Patrick Keane came up and tapped me on the shoulder and said, you've been awarded the, the Norm Smith and you're going to have to make a speech. I think I said to Patrick, mate, I can't talk, so, I, you know, I can't talk, so. Um, you have to bear with me. I've lost my voice, but uh, we'll, we'll come back next week. Thanks for all the supporters for coming out. See you next week. Thank you. For some unknown reason, the rooms are actually flooded downstairs. So at the moment, the players can't actually go into the change rooms. Really? What, what else can happen? <laughs> so not only were we already stunned and confused and shocked about what happened, we had to go to the other change rooms because ours were flooded. Is my suit gone? Is all my clothes wet? I'm not going home with my Collingwood shorts. One of my really good mates was Jason Graham at St Kilda. And Spoke to him and I was like, will you guys do your function tonight, do you reckon? Do you reckon we will? And it's all these questions. So the president with Nathan Buckley and also Nick Maxwell and the coach Michael Moldhouse. And I mentioned to Nick at this stage that we should consider going to the function because I knew what had happened in 1977. Collingwood mucked it up. They all went home. North Melbourne got themselves together, went to the dinner and reorganised themselves. I said, no, Ed, we're not going to the function. That's not going to help our recovery. None of the players wanted to go. Maxi was dead against it, but I was prepared to push it as far as it needed to get to get the result. There was not one ounce of doubt in my mind that we had to have the function. Sort of on the spot, I just, just in my mind, I'm thinking, it's half time. I've got to get this across. It's half time. So we made a decision that night that we'd let the guys have the night off. Collingwood went the other way where they all turned up to their function. We took the view that we probably had the game won close to the finish and, and that the players probably would benefit more from just having the quiet night. They went home that night. Maybe we, we should have kept them together, maybe not. I, I'm not too sure. You'll never know. I think for our club at that point in time, that was the right decision. I wouldn't change that. The Magpie faithful gathered at Crown with steeled resolve. We haven't bunkered down. We're out here with our friends, our sponsors, our family. Because we don't want to bunker down. So when we got to the dinner, 
The first thing I did was have to go around to all the old supporters and tell them, the curse isn't on. They were saying the curse, we've been cursed. Oh, we should have won, and oh, we'd have done this. Misery loves company, and there was plenty of it. But we got it going, and suddenly the vibe started happening. And At half time in the 2010 Toyota AFL Grand Final, scores are level. I have faith in this amazing group of players that we got who represent our team week in, week out. I have absolute faith. If we treat this as a loss, it will be. If we treat this as an opportunity, it will be. Mick's speech to the Collingwood throng was just what we needed. It's his finest hour as far as I'm concerned, the way he was able to get everyone right, and then the players bought in. Subconsciously switched the players' mind um, as well from wallowing to, all right, OK, it's half time. It's just made us start feeling good about ourselves again and, yeah, walked out really confident. We just, we really thought we were just going to smash them. This is the benefit of the, the Westpac Centre, the altitude training. It's going to win us the premiership. It was the proudest moment of the administration of the Collingwood Football Club in my time. Had about six or seven beers and was, had a good sleep. <laughs> no, I'm joking. The morning after and both teams were literally back on track. After the numbness of a drawn grand final, mental strength could be the key to premiership success. I was pretty confident that we were in a better physical spot. Um, I think they were a little bit banged up. I was probably more confident by Sunday night. Ross was asked a question about the game. He said something along the line, they have every right to put this game on Sunday. When I heard that, I knew they were sore. I remember the week how sore we were. Like, we didn't... We hardly moved. And maybe we didn't do enough. Well, they were incredibly sore. Incredibly sore. Emotionally, we were beaten to get back up again. I think all of us were just shot mentally. The, the whole group was pretty, pretty much that spent. Is. Yeah. I felt confident that we wouldn't let them off the hook. Collingwood win by their greatest ever margin in a grand final. It doesn't get better than that. It was heroic. Yeah, it was just, it was the greatest moment of my life. It was very emotional. I remember um, going into the rooms, mum and dad, my two sisters, you know, giving them a hug. It was, yeah, very emotional. It was a dream come true. For me, it was just relief. It was relief that I've won one, that no one can take that away from me. And you just realise how much it means to people. They really hammered us from the start and was probably just vindicated where they'd been all year. The whole St Kilda community went into mourning. It broke their hearts. Devastated. Hearts broken. Players' hearts broken. In some respects, we're coming out of it just now. It's taken a long time to wash through. A long time to wash through. I feel so elated for the Collingwood people, but I'll never, ever forget. I saw a little kid in the stand with a St Kilda Guernsey on, crying his eyes out. I thought, there, there is injustices in the world. I mean, if that's the worst thing that can happen to him, well... But, you know, you know I saw all the, all the great things for the Collingham supporters, but I saw all that kid. Mark Evans presented a paper to the Commission today for our consideration, and we have agreed that we will no longer replay the grand final. The following would, will occur in the event of a drawn grand final. Five minutes of additional time, plus time on, each way. I was wrapped when the decision was made. I would never want a player to have to go through what we had to go through. I'd love to now see a drawn grand final. Siren goes and know that teams get together and now they've got five minutes each way. So we'll see if that day comes, and it probably will, but um, I wonder if I'll still be bitter about it and I'll be, I'll be over it by then. A very good call, just six years too late, because I think we would have won, but that's, uh, no, that's the way it goes. <laughs> I still say we would have won in the next 10 minutes if we had played extra time. Everyone else would say you're crazy, but that's what I believe. Another 10, oh, we win. Another 30 seconds, we win. Convinced of that? Yeah. Well, I've very often thought of that. I'd, I'd feel just as confident to say that, that what, what, what Ross would say. He would say his side would win, and I'd say my side would win. Oh, 
another 10 minutes and yeah, I probably reckon that that would have held up the cup. Winning a premiership's not the panacea to a long and happy life. We've seen that this year with you know, some other teams in history that have won premierships and their lives are in disarray. So I'm pretty comfortable that it is what it is. So we've got a bond with that playing group. Um, I describe it like we've got a premiership, we just don't have the medal. Would we all rather be premiership players? Of course. People would talk about you differently, the group would be looked at differently, you'd be judged as a better player by sheer nature of the fact that the ball bounced up instead of back and that's just the way it is, that's the way people judge footballers. But the relationships are something that are, are really important and, and will treasure. We're still going to get together and we're still, our kids are still going to be mates. And because we didn't win one, that's, that's not going to be different. If we've created a legacy that people at the club now are proud of, then that's something that, uh, that I feel good about. What one thing that you had control of that you'd change in that day? <sighs> Yeah, if I could have died for it, I would have died it, but I couldn't, so I lost many of our sleepless nights over it, but I've thought about that thousands of times. Thousands. I wish it would morph into a soccer ball, so it would just bounce up nicely, and then when he could pick it up and kick a goal. I could just imagine what he'd do to the Collingwood fans when he kicked the goal, running into the goal square. Kind of makes you, yeah, toey and sweaty that you want to go back and relive it and make sure it ends the way you want to end. For whatever reason, maybe because we won it, people really underestimate how amazing that was. You know, people go, oh, you know, what were the, the recent great grand finals? I mean, it's not really my fault. Isn't it? This was the best grand final by that far. It was unbelievable. We didn't get um, the, the ultimate prize, so there's always something short, but I don't sit there thinking I took any shortcuts, so therefore I have no regrets. It's pretty easy. Thanks, man.